You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon, so if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive Rate Shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a Rate Shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Sesame Ginger Glaze Chicken Signature Wrap. How would you like it? I'll take a... Sports announcer at home? Yeah, how'd you... We just know. My wife picks up the new signature wrap. It's got double the rotisserie-style chicken mixed with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap and... She takes the bite! Incredible! And now she's closing the door on my... Subway, make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Double meat based on average six-inch sub. I'm little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, and here is my spell. No, Dad, like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pour me out. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Hell no, to the no, no, no. Hell to the no, hell to the no, to the no, 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 no. Hell no, no, to the no, no. Right now, we're live. Welcome to Chick Chat. My ladies are on. They're ready to say hi. Say hi, y'all. Hi, everyone. Hello, friends. <laughs> Hello, friends. <laughs> Guess who's back? Back again. Yay! <laughs> Our very, very own pod is back. How you doing, honey? It's been such a long... Happy birthday to you. Yes! Yes, Mrs. You. President. Yes, <laughs> today. Yeah, girl. So love it. Yeah, so much for me sliding Producer. by this one. It's yeah. her birthday today. Yes, so much for me. See, 28 and see, y'all. 28, what will a girl? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I wish I were, too. I know. But we can dream, right? Well, I'm, I'm calculating in my head how long I would have been. I, I would have had to, or at what age I would have had to start uh, counting backwards for me to be 28 right now. But hey, that's okay. That works for me. Whatever. Okay, don't do that. We can all dream. Yeah. I am almost double 28, but like, you it know, that was a pivotal year. It, Let's just all pretend it, it for like actually, a minute. It's actually a very positive thing because it wasn't that long ago. So, hey. I mean, yeah, well, I maybe not for you, but for some of us, it was kind of a long time ago. Yeah, whatever. So, um, yeah, what's going on, ladies? Oh, oh not enough much for here. Well, okay. There's a lot going on. Apparently, there's a hurricane about to hit Puerto Rico. Yeah, we have two running right now on a, on parallel tracks, right? 
And so, and I saw G this morning said who had this on their 2020. That's going to be that's problematic. Well, it, that, it is that's problematic. Once it's coming. It's problematic, but it's not completely unheard of either. And I saw G this morning mm-hmm. said, you know, 2020 bingo card who had two hurricanes hitting at the same time. And I was like, well, I mean, you know, I'm not sure that belongs on the 2020 um, bingo card. And I mean, you know, typically, no. typically it, they That are, should actually be. You know what it should be? It should be the free space because it's a given. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it kind no, of come well, on. Who didn't have two hurricanes in the Gulf on their 2020 bingo card? Well, I, I, I have them. I have them. But I'm from Puerto Rico. This is standard for us. Uh, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you, you see, guys that's every saying. single day and it's not- are either having a hurricane or some FBI arrests or <laughs> some earthquakes in Ponce. Haunts, Puerto Rico, earthquakes all the time. What's so, up with that? You know, a lot of people don't seem to know, but we the, the island is actually on a very active uh, plate and it has a fault line. As a matter of fact, one of the most famous trenches in the world is called the Puerto Rico Trench. It's right north of um, the island. And it is one of the most beautiful places. And it's, 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 it's great for scuba diving. A lot of people go there to... Um, you know, study uh, sea uh, um, animals that you don't find anywhere else. So, but it's very, not, it's not as well known as, say, Australia that has every single weird freaking creature on the planet. Oh, so, Australia. Uh, oh, Australia, everything's trying to kill you. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But, so, the thing that, um, about the hurricanes, the thing that a lot of people don't realize unless they live on an island or in a hurricane zone. And even even a lot of people that actually live like on islands in hurricane zones don't know this because they don't have to watch every single storm. They don't watch mm-hmm. you know, they don't watch them for ten years coming off of and even more than that, coming off of the coast of West Africa. So they don't know how many storms actually don't make landfall. One good clue about that is to notice how the A storm, you heard about the A storm, and then the next storm right. you heard about was the F storm. Well, there was a B, C, D, and E in between there that you never heard about because it didn't get far enough. Or, and I mean, you know, they don't name them until they get to tropical storm status, right? So there's even, right. mo- there's even more depressions and... And areas of interest, right? Because that's one designation for them. One um, invests, you know. There's there's all these other categories of things and all these other storms that come off Africa that never even get mentioned. So people don't understand. Uh, most people, I found that most people don't. And this is not a it's not a dig. We're all very busy. We have tons of things to keep up with. And unless you're actually working in an area where you have to know what's going on two weeks ahead of time, you're not watching storms come off the, the west of, coast of Africa. I hope to God that there aren't that many. I mean, there, there's a lot of amateur uh, weather experts on Twitter, of course, but there's a lot of everything on Twitter. <laughs> yes, there oh, are. my God. Most this people week, don't I'm a watch neuroscientist. Hey. Tomorrow, I am a nuclear physicist. Next day... I, I know everything about geopolitics on the whole planet. That's Twitter in a nutshell. Right. So the chances of these actually being at the level where they'd be a named storm when they make landfall is, you know, that's the chances of that, that they actually make landfall at a tropical storm status. It's kind of, it's not even really that high. Both of these storms may make landfall at the same time in the same area, but when you have two storms this close together, it's almost like, and don't be surprised if you see them, like, start to merge, or it comes up in the news that, you know, it looks like they might merge or run together or whatever, because people are really going to freak out when that happens, and it's good. That would be a bingo card thing, because the chances of two storms with that much power getting close to each other and not ripping each other apart are very low. The chances that they rip each other apart, I think, are actually probably pretty high. Now, I'm not an, a weather expert. I'm not even an amateur. I had people, I had volunteers that did that for me so that I didn't have to figure out that science. 
on top of every other science that I've ever had to learn, including math. So anyway, don't be surprised if you see these two guys rip each other apart because I, I, I feel like I've seen that happen once or twice. Well, you know, it's uh, I, I'm very jaded when it comes to hurricanes. Yes, they have a very powerful presence, and they can do a shit ton of destruction. Yeah. That much is obvious. But it's not like a tornado or an earthquake. That is, you you're you, you live, you're watching this thing coming at you. You yeah, have you time have to warning. leave. You have time to batten down the hatch. Yes, you have time. Yes. you know. Yeah, yeah. So the lead, which time is why. Was- when I hear my my family freaking out in Puerto Rico, I'm like, "This is not your first freaking rodeo." I know, right? I, I mean, <laughs> the absolute I, best. I was like, unhinged about this coming hurricane. The absolute Ooh. best. Okay. in the world. The what best- are you doing about it? You know, and, right. and I'm like, you literally live in a concrete house. It's made from concrete block. Okay, and you have aluminum aluminum windows that you can like completely close off. You have bathtubs in the house that you can fill with water. You need to get prepared. No, she's just spending her time complaining about the fact that they're going to get hit by a hurricane, and the U.S. has still not repaired everything on the island. And I'm like, well, it's not the U.S.'s problem; it's yours. <laughs> right. The abs- the absolutely <laughs> best attitudes about hurricanes in the world that exist anywhere are from Ocracoke to Frisco in the Outer Banks. Mm-hmm. And the, what happens there, and, and they get, I lived in North Carolina, did this work in North Carolina for um, at least a decade and, you know, had property on the, out on the Outer Banks a, a decade more than that. Watch these people get cut off. Right, so the, the the bridge washes out, the bridge is destroyed, the roads are destroyed, destroyed. They're completely cut off from civilization. Ocracoke is by ferry only. Um, I, I mean, they get cut off in so many. I can think of ten, like five or six different places where you can get completely cut off from civilization in a hurricane. Yeah. Or I've yeah. seen people cut off from civilization in a hurricane. And these these people are they are the most resilient people you've ever. The hurricanes coming, man. You need to evacuate, so. man. Well, right. I've read I've, I've written out a category five. I think I can handle this one, right? And they won't budge. They they survive. And I mean, you know, quite frankly, they they thrive. People inland will be freaking out, and out on Ocracoke, they're like, man, we'll get water when we get water. We'll make do. Right, I mean, you know, we're de- <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got this desalinization op- apparatus set up over here. We're good. It's crazy. They have yeah. the best attitudes about hurricanes that I've ever seen anywhere in my life, and they do really well, <laughs> to be honest. So, yeah, it's it's you know, I remember how I'm I'm old enough to remember my family throwing hurricane parties. And, you know, and after the hurricane would pass, everybody went out and started cleaning up the mess, you know, from the, uh, from the, uh, winds and the destruction and whatnot. And I remember growing up that that was standard and it isn't anymore. Yeah. And it, it's kind of sad because, you know, growing up, it was our responsibility to make sure that things were cleared off. All the debris was cleared off from from uh, from the streets, and you cleaned up the mess on in your lawn and, and stuff like that. And, and I, I see my cousins; they don't. They just wait for the government to do it. And I'm like, why are you waiting for the? They can't even get there. <laughs> Who waits for the government to come clean it? Wait, the government cleaning up your lawn is a thing? Uh, <laughs> Not the lawn, the streets. And, oh, because you know, oh, I'm like, I could really use some people cleaning up my lawn. I'm not going to lie, fam. <laughs> I really... Your house, she would love because that's what she does constantly. She I mean, likes picking woman, up sticks and she, crap on the lawn? Cannot, I swear to God, Vod, she cannot watch a leaf fall from the tree without going outside to pick it up. Is she an American citizen? Well, of course. She's Puerto Rican. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, well, no. Wait, is that... 
Is that a thing? Like, if you're yes, if it's you're a thing. from Puerto Rico, you oh okay. Yeah. I didn't like. I work in uh, in an immigration adjacent. Uh, no, the, the echelon. I didn't. Born, I did not know American, that though. If you were born in an American territory, you have American citizenship, but your I, citizenship is a citizenship by act of Congress, not by birthright. So oh. it's a little different. Wait. So is it like DACA? Is it going to get erased no, by any no, no, the, that was basically the, only, the main difference in the citizenship, uh, there's two. One, I can never run for president. Um, no, honey. Yeah, no, they, it, it, it's fine because I don't want to. Why and would you is, want to, and honestly? Someone might. And the second one is it can be revoked by an act of Congress. Ooh. So, when did America, like, take receivership or I don't know what we call it, but, like, Mostly when did World we sort of, when did we take on Puerto Rico? Like, uh, hey, you, Rico. you're, you're sort of American, but I mean, you can only vote in the primaries. Like, when did that happen? It's the Spanish-American war, wasn't it? Yeah, well, really? we had the little tussle with the Spanish-American war, which they lost. And ironically, Spain does not recognize that. But, um, oh, and I, I have a complete story about the whole Spanish thing, too. No, but, but when did Puerto Rico become, I, I do not know the full history. I know that we built a bunch of crap there, and then we were like, yeah, no, and then it, like, went south, and it was bad. Um, what, we've had a very, uh, it, we it has been an interesting history as far as the ownership of the island goes, but we Basically, we, as in the United States, won it fair and square after the uh, Spanish-American War. We traded Cuba for Puerto Rico. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> and, uh, Why wouldn't we just keep both of them? Uh, I think it was a strategic move by the administration at the time. Who was president at the time when that happened? In 1898? Well, yeah. Um, I don't know. That, that wasn't Taft, was it? Mm-hmm. I got Don't the Google call. machine. Up. Okay, but so what it is Puerto McKinley. Rico like? It, I know it's not like a full state, and I know they can what the vote McKinley. in the primaries, but not in the general. Like, what's the story? Uh, it was it was McKinley who was president. Yeah, McKinley. That and... friggin' guy. <laughs> <laughs> friggin' McKinley. Well, he was assassinated. Give him give him some stuff. Right. Exactly. Wait, was he? <laughs> oh, wait, he was, like, legit. He didn't just take a bullet in his, like, cigarette case. He was literally... Okay, so who came after him? What happened there? Uh, I'm going to have to Google this. You, you're going to have to Google that. But the thing with Puerto Rico is that for a time, the governorships were appointed by the U.S. And it wasn't until sometime in the 30s or 40s, I forget which time, that the U.S. actually allowed the citizens of Puerto Rico to elect their own government and elect their own government. But there was a lot of contention um, even up until the late 50s. Uh, there were several groups uh, that were intent on eradicating the U.S. presence in the island. They should have fought harder because they should have gotten rid of the U.S. I mean... Yeah. Well, and then, yeah, you know, but, but then, you know, they, they wanted it both ways. You know, they wanted the perks, but none of the headaches. And, and, and in, in a way, a lot of Puerto Ricans are still on that same fence. And it turns out America did that, too. We were like, oh, we'll build some factories there. We'll do some stuff there. But you don't get to be really a state. So, but, you know, sorry. But, and some people are, like, perfectly fine with never being a state. There's some that actually want statehood. But they don't realize that with statehood come a lot of headaches. They think that they will keep the status quo and the current laws, even if they were to become a state. They just want the power to vote. And I How do you say federalism? What is it in Spanish? <laughs> like Federal Yeah. Is. <laughs> Federal is they don't get. So so since you Brought up uh, the whole Spain thing and the Spanish American War. It is true that Spain never recognized um, the citizenship of Puerto Ricans as being the, uh, that of the U.S. They are technically, according to Spain, Iberian nationals, and Ooh. we have 
citizenship by right of Spain. We just don't recognize it because we're technically a U.S. territory. But it, I feel like if we this is something we need to figure out as Americans. Like, we either take the whole island and be like, you want to be Americans? Or we're like, hey, that's cool. Sorry about what McKinnon Well, you know, it actually we don't have any, we don't harbor any ill will towards McKinley um, at the time. Well, he's, he's the dead, so whatever. <laughs> at the time he of was the shot by an anarchist. the people of Puerto Rico didn't even have a voice, <laughs> much less you know yeah. anything. So, so with the bartering yeah. of Puerto Rico over Cuba and all that stuff, we actually had a voice. It was small at the time, but it was at least it was something. Um, and then, you know, we, we got to govern ourselves for the most part, which is why the island is in disarray, in my opinion. But this is an incredibly fascinating story. And this is one of the things that would be, I feel like would be very, I don't know, what's the word? These are the things that we should be teaching our kids about in school in terms of American history. When people are like, you have to teach them the real history. Like, this is the stuff we should be teaching our kids about because I could go in right now and be like, hey, kids, what do you know about Puerto Rico? They'd be like, uh, nothing. And shouldn't we know about that? It's, it's part of America. This is the of history in our history courses. That is true. Um, so I, I, I mean, I'm sorry. It's all taken up with bullying, anti-bullying seminars and, you know, racial justice, equity, but maybe we should, I don't know, make a push to get back to like actual history without the scepter of who was a bad person, who did this, who did that? Why don't we just, you know, why don't we just go back and like read some books, learn some history you know, instead of is trying to right. instead of trying to look at it through a different lens of 2020, which is the most retarded year that's ever existed. Well, that is true. Well, and it's my not, dad always had a just, saying: the best American history books were written in Canada. It's not just 2020. <laughs> I mean, this stuff is this. Well, stuff, you know, the, his point being that since history is written by the winners, you want a third party that has no skin in the game to actually write the history. So, but, but we should trash all those paradigms and be like, why don't we just write actual history and, and sort of span the continuum of, you know, okay, these people said this, those people said that. Let's go through the middle and be like, wow. Are a lot of companies. You have Colgate Palmolive there, you have Olay, you have Warner Lambert, Baxter Laboratories, um, mm. John, Johnson. You have. You have Be them. right back, adding to my stock portfolio. <laughs> but, but by the same token, there are stories, reports, whatever, that, you know, oh, the U.S. went into Puerto Rico and was predatory and did all these things. And then something went wrong and we just bailed. Like, you know what I mean? It's that that dichotomy of, of that. Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. That, that's, uh, that's by design. And it's not... Um, I was trying to interject yeah. a minute ago. The reason that I asked is because I was trying to interject this a minute ago. And, and you guys evidently couldn't uh, No, me. before we just, when you said, can you hear me? That's when I heard you. Okay. I haven't heard you. Yeah. So, so, yeah, it's by design and the, um, it's not new. So, I mean, we're, 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 we're like, oh, all this in 2020, this has been going on since 1920. So, and if you think about it, it you can't change in the mind of a people, you cannot change their history in the blink of an eye. It's it's taken a century, and this is where we are. Because so many people, some of us have been screaming about this for 40 years. 
so many people, and, and, and before, you know, before us, people were screaming about it for 40 years before that. The, um, huh. right. So, I mean, you know, this is, this, this is not new. You mentioned McKinley. He was shot by an anarchist. The reason, oh, you know, like Cuba, Antifa. Yeah. And Cuba had a lot to do with it. And then look, and, and of course they call them anarchists. The, this is the, um, this is the problem that, that you get when you start talking about anarchy and anarchists is that absolutely no body, 99.99999% of the world population has no freaking clue what an anarchist is. So anyone who destroys anything is therefore an anarchist in their eyes, and that is not true. Anarchy is a political ideology that is probably closer to libertarianism than it is to socialism or communism. And the communists, who are the furthest thing from an anarchist, because an anarchist wants basically no state, and communism right. is the ultimate state. Antifa are communists, not anarchists. They can call themselves anarchists all they want to. That does not make them anarchists. I can call myself a penguin. Till I'm blue in the face, it does not make me a penguin. I don't know why I used penguin. It was the nicest thing that I came come up with, and it's my birthday. So happy birthday! To yeah. You. So I mean, this is this is a crazy yeah, baby. That when it comes to <laughs> and when it comes to destruction, the brown shirts and black shirts of the Nazi movement destroyed everything that they could find to destroy in order to take over the state, not to achieve anarchy, but to take over the state and make it a more powerful and intrusive state. The Bolsheviks in Russia, did the exact same thing. As a matter of fact, the Nazis learned from the Bolsheviks how to do it. So, and these are the two greatest statist ideologies and political organizations in the history of the modern era, at least. So, calling these people anarchists is not not to get on a rant like I'm angry about it I really don't care because people are stupid and they do this kind of shit all the time but some of it is a a, me, a media push to make them more palatable because if you call them communist then the only reason for their violence and destruction is to take over the state if you call them anarchists, the violence and destruction is to oppose the state. And I believe that was the same thing with the um, fellow who um, killed McKin McKinley. He was a statist, but he was just a statist yeah. that was opposed to the United States. Opposed to our role in the Car Caribbean, um, or would it be Caribbean? I always get, so Carib Caribbean is the noun and Caribbean is the adjective or is that the other way around? Caribbean. Is I'm just a biz and I'm sitting <laughs> there on Capitol Hill. Okay. Caribbean is the, is the place. Caribbean is the, uh, okay. Caribbean adjective. is the adjective. Okay. I always <laughs> get those backwards. So opposed to our role in the Caribbeans and, and particularly upset about Cuba, which was a hot topic for McKinley to begin with. So, there's my little bit, there's my rant on history, ideologies, and how and why everybody gets it so friggin' wrong. <laughs> they do all the time. Uh, they do, and it's, anno it's annoying to me. Because they don't bother to research. They don't bother to, like, for me, if I don't know about something, I will never come at anyone and be like, bah, 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 bah. I'm like, I would like to know about that. I'm not offended that I don't know it. I'd like to know about it. So I Google it, and I probably get to go down some whack-ass ADD rabbit hole where I'm like, and now I'm going to study Puerto Rico for like three hours and figure out how that all happened. Because it's one of those things that I... I do not know the history. Like, yeah, there are some no, things I will opine on all day long. Never and, apologize. Uh, Puerto Rico is not one of them, but it's... 
it's something I'm interested in. I would like to know what is that. Never. Apologize. You know what's awesome though? Never. All those FBI arrests of all those crap bag uh, governor governors and whatnot in Puerto Rico. Like, boom, out you go. Yeah. Oh never. my God! We're help us. We're dying. Really? You got T-shirts printed. You're not dying that fast. Well, yeah, that was the first clue, right? But you should never apologize for having the thirst for knowledge, ever. No, I will never apologize for that. So don't dish yourself for that. But, yeah, I mean, rabbit holes are... Rabbit holes can be good. No, everybody should do that. Everybody, if you don't know... If somebody says something and you don't know what the story is, for the love of God, go Google it and Mm -hmm. educate yourself. Even if you read the Wikipedia, I guess. I mean, not really, but you know what I mean. Oh, so here's here's a hint about Wikipedia. Go straight to the references. The best thing on any wiki page are the references. And go from there. You know this is happening. People spurred out when they don't know the answer to something, but it sounds like it might be good for somebody they don't like or whatever. Why don't you just... We have every piece of information ever in the history of mankind at our fingertips. I am literally sitting in front of a bank of computational devices <laughs> where you ask me anything and in about 8.2 seconds I'll be like well here's how you actually formulate a nuclear bomb and make that happen like you know just frick so look uh, it up learn something yeah so uh ab- absolutely but research blows the narrative so that's why people